Okay, so we're going to work these Kirchhoff rules practice problems. And the first thing I'm always going to do is I'm going to find the total resistance in the circuit so that I can find out what the current through the battery is because anything that's connected in series with the battery is going to have that same current. So in this case, we have three resistors that are just connected in series. And so it's simple to determine the total resistance by just adding the resistance of the three. And so therefore, it's simply seven ohms. So now through the battery, the voltage rise is six volts. The total resistance is seven ohms. Using Ohm's law, V equals IR, solving for I, I get V over R. So the current through the battery, therefore, is 0.857 volts. Now that means then that the current through the 3 ohm resistor is also 0.857 volts, excuse me, amps. And the current through the other two resistors is also 0.857 amps. So over here to the right, I've given you an example of a chart that I find very helpful to use in solving these problems because you can kind of work it like a logic puzzle in that once you know certain information, it can lead you to what else you know. So in this case, I know that 0.857 amps is the current through the battery. These three resistors are in series with the battery, and so I can just fill down that column, 0.857 amps for each. Well, then also I know by Ohm's law that the voltage drop equals the current times the resistance. So I know that resistor 1, it's given that it has a resistance of 1 ohm, and so it's going to have a voltage drop of 0.857 volts. Resistor 2 and resistor 3 both have resistances of 3 ohms, and so 3 times 0.857 for each of those would be 2.57 volts. And then I can just double check by using the loop rule, which says that the voltage rises have to equal the voltage drops around a closed loop. So a voltage rise of 6 volts has to equal a voltage drop of 0.857 plus a voltage drop of 2.57 and a voltage drop of 2.57 here. And if you add those up, you get very close to, if not exactly, 6 volts. And so the loop rule is confirmed. All right. Same principle on the second problem. We're going to first find the total resistance, but this time the same three resistors are connected in parallel rather than in series. And so I have to apply the parallel rule, which says 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of the individual resistors. And so 1 divided by 3 ohms plus 1 divided by 3 ohms plus 1 divided by 1 ohm is going to give me the reciprocal of the parallel resistance, which when I punch that in, I get a parallel resistance of 0.599 ohms. And as we pointed out before, notice always that the parallel resistance is going to be less than the least resistance, because uh, if you have three options, no matter how bad they are, they're better than just having that one option of the least resistance. So now it becomes a very simple task. I'm going to make a chart, as I've advised you to do, with the battery R1, R2, and R3, and find the current and voltage through each. Well, we know that the voltage rise across the battery is 9 volts, and now I can use Ohm's law to determine the current through the battery, which is the 9 volts over the total resistance of 0.599 ohms, giving a current through the battery of 15 amps. So then that 15 amps is going to be divided equally, or not equally, but divided up through these three resistors. And I could say that they're going to be in a, uh, a ratio uh, related to their resistances. But in this case, notice the loop rule. If I take this loop here, the voltage drop across this top resistor, R1, 
has to be equal to the voltage rise of that 9 volt battery. And so I know that this is going to drop 9 volts across that resistor. And so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in as being a 9 volt drop. And incidentally, on all of these voltage drops for the resistors, I could use negative signs to show that they are drops, uh, but uh, I'm not doing that here just to uh, keep it a little cleaner. Well, what's going to be the voltage drop across resistor 2? Well, if I follow the loop going through the center here, you can see that it also has to be a 9 volt drop, and the same is true for R3. And that shouldn't surprise me because, remember, in parallel, the voltage drops are equal. In series, the currents are equal. In parallel, the voltage drops are equal. And so now it just becomes algebra again. I have the resistance, and I know the voltage drop. I can just do voltage divided by resistance to get the way the currents divide up. And so real quickly then, uh, that gives me 9 volts divided by 3 ohms is 3 amps here. And again, 3 amps here. And again, 9 amps here for a total of 9 plus 3 plus 3. There's my 15 amps that split up at this junction, applying the junction rule. Okay, now moving to this third circuit. You see this is a slightly more complicated because we've used both a parallel branch of resistors, but they're also connected in series with a couple of other resistors. And so I always just start inside zoom in as closest inside loop or branch that I have. In this case, this is two uh, resistors in parallel here. And find the equivalent resistance of this branch, and then notice that this branch is connected in series with those two resistors. So applying the parallel rule here, I do 1 over 300 plus 1 over 400. And that will give me the reciprocal of the parallel resistance. Don't forget to take the reciprocal of that sum. And when I do that, I get a parallel resistance of 171 ohms for these two resistors. Then they're connected in series with those two, so I get a total resistance in the circuit of 171 plus 200 plus 100, which is simply 471 ohms. Applying Ohm's Law then, uh, V over R equals I. So V is 6 and R is 471. That tells me that the current through the battery then is 0 0.0127 amps. So once again I'm going to make a chart. Uh, the battery R1, R2, R3, and R4. Currents and voltages. Well, the voltage rise across the battery is 6 volts. And I just found that the current through the battery is 0 0.0127 amps. So then I asked myself, okay, well, what, if anything, is connected in series with the battery? Because if it's in series, it's going to have the same current. Well, in this case, R1 is in series with the battery, so it also has a current of 0 0.0127 amps. And you'll notice that R2 is also in series with the battery. And so it has a current of 0 0.0127 amps as well. Now using Ohm's Law, V equals IR, I know the resistor 1 has a resistance of 100 ohms. And so therefore it has a voltage drop of 1.27 volts. Resistor 2 has a 200 ohm resistance. Therefore it has a voltage drop double that of 2.54 volts. Now, R3 and R4, I don't know the current yet, but I can find the voltage drop if I apply the loop rule. Notice that if I go through this loop, this 6 volt rise has to be negated by these three drops. So this drop plus this drop plus this drop has to equal 6 volts, meaning that this resistor here must be dropping 2.19 volts and it's in parallel with R4 so it also must have a drop of 2.19 volts and then now I can take voltage divided by resistance to get the current through each of those and for R3 then it's 0 0.0073 amps 
and 0 0.0055 amps for R4. Okay, so finally this fourth example, you can see it's just a little bit more complicated than the third one. Again, we have a parallel branch and a series branch, but then notice this right here. And at first, this looks different than that, but if you just ask yourself, does a charge go through both resistors or one or the other, then you can see that this is just another way of drawing two parallel resistors. So this is the same as this. If I'm a charge, I either go through this loop, this part of the loop, or I go through that part. So these two are in parallel, just like these two are in parallel. So I've got two parallel branches and a series uh, resistor between them. Again, the first thing I'm going to do is find the current through the battery, for which I need the total resistance. So I'm going to start with this parallel branch, apply the parallel rule of 1 over 200 plus 1 over 400, and then take the reciprocal of that sum, and I'll find that that gives me an equivalent resistance of 133 ohms through this branch. And then I can do the same thing on this branch and find that it gives me an equivalent resistance of 25 ohms. And that's just a, a shortcut there to notice that anytime the two resistors, if there's only two resistors and they're in parallel, then the resistance, the equivalent resistance is going to be half of each of the individual resistors. But you can prove that to yourself by applying the 1 over 50 plus 1 over 50 and take the reciprocal. All right, and then uh, now I have those two. I can add it to the resistor that's in series, giving me a total resistance of 278, excuse me, 258 ohms. All right, well, if I have 12 volts and 258 ohms, then the current through the battery must be 0 0.0465 amps. So once again, I'm going to draw myself a chart. The battery, R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. Currents and voltages. All the voltage across the battery is 12 volts. And I just found that the, the current is 0 0.0465 amps. Well, do any of the other resistors share that same current? Is any, are any of the resistors connected in series with the battery? And at first glance, it might look like it's not, but if you ask yourself, okay, no matter which branch, is there any resistor I don't have a choice of whether or not to go through, you'll see that R3 is indeed in series with the battery. Whether I go R1 or R2, I have to go through R3, and I have to go through R3 before I go through either R4 or R5. So R3 has the same current as the battery, so I can fill that in on my chart. A 0 0.0465 amps. Now, there's no one else that's in series with the battery, and so, well, what can I fill in now? Well, I know the resistance of R3, and so I can go ahead and say that it has a voltage drop of 4.65 volts, but now I have uh, four resistors that I know neither the current nor the voltage for as of now. And so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start right here at this junction, and I'm going to apply the junction rule. I know that the current leaving the battery has two choices. It can either go through R1 or it can go through R2. The reason I'm choosing this branch to start with is because the resistances are equal. And if the resistances are equal and the voltage drops are equal because they're in parallel, then what does that tell you about the currents? Well, the currents are equal. And so the current that goes this way and the current that goes this way are both equal. And by the junction rule, they have to add up to the current that came in, which was 0 0.0465. So that means the current through R1 and the current through R2 are each half of 0 0.0465. In other words, R1's current is 0 0.0233 amps, as is R2, 0 0.0233 amps. Well, now I can go ahead and find the voltage drop across each of those resistors, and they have to be 1.16 volts each. And now I can apply the loop rule. 
if I go around this outside loop, I know I've dropped 1.16 volts across R1. I'm going to drop 4.65 volts across R3, which we already knew. And then as I go through R5, I've got to drop enough to where I've used uh, or I've equaled the 12 volt rise in the battery. And so R5 has to be 12 minus 1.16 minus 4.65. Well, that means then that the voltage drop is 6.19 volts. And actually, technically, I just found R5's voltage drop, right, which is 6.19 volts. But what do I know about R4 and R5? Well, they're parallel. So whether I go this way or that way, I have to drop 6.19 volts. So now I have the voltage drop across R4 and R5. And knowing their resistors, I can use the voltage divided by the resistance uh, to find their current, which tells me that through R4, 0 0.031 amps, 6.19 divided by 200, and then in R5, 6.19 divided by 400, simply going to be half of that, or 0 0.0155 amps.